I wanted to measure the power consumption of this mini split, but it's 240 volts, so I couldn't just plug it into a kilowatt or a smart plug. Then I figured I could just use one of those clamp-on current transformers to measure the current coming from the breaker going to the mini split. But first I figured I'd check that signal with a scope, and I'm getting this very wobbly sort of sine wave-like signal, and the mini split's not even turned on. So now I hooked up a 16 microfarad capacitor with my current clamp to the scope hooked up to a power cord. Let's plug that in. And we're getting pretty much the same waveform we got before, maybe just a little bit bigger. So that mini split, even while it's off, leaves something like a 16 microfarad capacitor hooked up to the line. Now the current going in out of the capacitor is pretty much the rate of change of the voltage. And the line in blue here is our voltage. Let's zoom that in a bit. So when the voltage goes up, the current in the capacitor goes up, voltage goes down, current goes down. And what's interesting, the location of the biggest bumps in our current signal, like right here, we also have a bit of an odd bump in the voltage signal. So the voltage coming out of our uh, socket here is not a nice and clean sine wave. Let's turn on this mini split. Now we get a much larger current signal, so uh, let's uh, turn that down a bit to see it better. And we have these bumps on the current waveforms. So the current usage of the mini split looks not at all like a sine wave. The current is going up sharply during the peak of the sine wave and then drops suddenly, it goes pretty much to zero. And then on the downside, same sort of thing. So at least it's symmetrical. So what causes that? The waveform from the power company is essentially a 60 hertz sine wave, 60 times per second, positive, negative, positive, negative. But the mini split using brushless DC motors needs DC, so we use something called a rectifier using four diodes that only pass current in one direction to essentially flip the bottom side of this waveform to the top. But now we only get an intermittent voltage. It still dips down to zero every once in a while. So we put a capacitor on the output and that is sort of like a little battery. And so what that does is it gets charged up by these waveforms and then as it goes down like this, the capacitor voltage slowly drops as power is being used until the next bump comes up, charges up again, drops down, the capacitor keeps the voltage. So we get a much more continuous DC waveform. But the capacitor being charged only at the peak of these waveforms means the current consumption is rather intermittent. And there are lots of devices that do this. Right now I've got my scope plugged into an extension cord which goes through the current transformer twice just to get more signal. And I get a similar sort of bump in the current twice in each waveform. So basically this employs the same strategy. But I'm surprised that our mini split uses such a simple approach because larger devices like computers these days are required to do power factor correction, which is to say use a smoother current waveform. Now I've got it hooked up to my two-year-old Dell PC and the current waveform is at least not a single bump, although it seems to be a bit spiky, probably an artifact from the switching power supply. But now if I give that computer some work to do, the current waveform is much bigger and you can see it uh, uses current through most of that sine wave. There's still some drop to no current right when the voltage is close to zero, but uh, that's pretty reasonable. So this makes much better use of the uh, available power. Let's measure the current of a CF bulb. And we also see a very bumpy sort of uh, current consumption wave. An LED bulb. Similar bumpy current use. And let's try a good old fashioned incandescent bulb. And we see the uh, current waveform is actually very nice and continuous but also it's using a lot more power because it's an old-fashioned uh, incandescent bulb which essentially is just a resistive element. Uh, let's try these lights. Oh, that's an interesting current waveform there. And the worst offenders are good old-fashioned dimmer switches which just kind of turn the current on at some random point in the waveform. So as I adjust this, you can see it just kind of turns the current on at some different spot in the waveform. Now to dimmer with an LED bulb and that makes for a totally spiky current waveform and it seems to be only on one side too. So I think 40-50 years ago the signal coming out of the power company would have been much cleaner without all these semiconductor devices that have switching power supplies and turn the current on willy-nilly here and there.
I just put together this experiment to show how the uh, power waveforms get distorted. Uh, this EcoFlow produces a very nice looking sine wave. That's the one in yellow and the one in blue is coming out of my AC power supply which inside of it is just a transformer. I just don't have a setting to produce exactly the same output level so I have it set to maybe 110 volts here. But now let's take the waveform from this and plug this adapter in here which is essentially a switching power supply and already we can see a slight flat spot on the waveform here. Now let's turn on the load which is an air purifier and just set to low and we can see a very distinct sort of slope flat spot on the top and that flat spot is actually quite similar to the flat spot I'm seeing on the top of the waveform from the power company and this thing is only set to low let's set it a bit higher and now that flat spot is much more noticeable even though the uh, yellow waveform coming from the EcoFlow box is still a nice sine wave and now using a current transformer to measure the current which is now in yellow here we can see a bump of the current always at the peak of the waveforms so that current peak is causing the top of the waveform coming out of the transformer to be flattened so it's the combination of transformers in the system and semiconductor devices with all willy-nilly current waveforms that cause our power to be all wobbly but let's check the current waveforms from some low-tech devices I'll start with the space heater we have a lot more current consumption let's scale that down a bit and that current waveform pretty much follows the voltage waveform exactly just a little bigger there and now with a small shaded pole motor running this fan the current waveform is nice and smooth although it shifted quite a bit and it seems to be just a little bit wobbly. Let's try this motor. And again, a relatively nice and continuous waveform, although surprisingly bumpy. Let's uh, put a bit of load on that motor. That changes the waveform quite a bit. Although under load, I guess it's more like a sine wave. Cheap oscillating fan with an induction motor. Makes for a very nice sine wave. Now with these really complicated waveforms, I can't just measure the current and be done with it. I actually have to sample way faster than 60 hertz and basically multiply the current and the voltage at every sample. And my Raspberry Pi A to D converter just isn't fast enough and I don't want to get into Arduino programming for now. So I still want to use a kilowatt or a smart plug, but these actually measure the current on neutral and I need to measure it on hot. But if I wire these so that neutral is actually on hot and measure only one leg, I think I can use one. So I've got a socket here. Neutral goes to the hot side from the uh, breaker. And then neutral coming out here goes into here, goes to the mini split. So both of these are now measuring current on hot, which they see as neutral. And they're wired into one leg, so you only see 120 volt instead of 240. And now turning on the mini split. With the mini split running, right now we got about 360 on here. Smart plug says 358, 355, 354, 353, 353. So it's nice to see them agreeing. So I think I can trust those readings and generally I have faith in that kilowatt. And with both of them agreeing, I think they probably integrate the power the same way. Of course, I have to remember to double the power because both of these are only seeing half the voltage.